here we're going to look at factoring. We're going to look at factoring in two different types of problems. Um, the first one we're going to start with is the most basic way to factor, and this is when there's just a coefficient of 1 in front of the x squared term. And so it would look something like you see right here where it says x squared plus bx plus c. Now, when we're factoring, with only a, when there's only a coefficient of 1 in front of the x squared, it actually requires just one step. So I call it the one-step factoring type of problem. And in this case, what we want to do, and I'm going to start with our example. We're going to do two examples here. I'm going to start off with x squared plus 7x plus 6. Now, what we want to do, and I'll even write down our step. We want to find two factors of the third term. Now the third term is our c term, so we want to find two factors of the third term that when you sum them or add them together, you get the middle term. Now, when we find those two factors, those are the factors that go inside our two binomials. So let's look at this example. I've got x squared plus 7x plus 6. Now the step says, and like I said, it's just one step. We want to find two factors of the third term. So in this case, our third term is the 6. We want to find two factors of 6. So two numbers that I can multiply to get 6. But when I add those two numbers together, I get the middle term. So in this case, it would be 7. So I want factors of 6 that when I add them, I will get 7. And you can go through your factors of 6. We've got 2 times 3. Those do multiply to get 6. But when I add 2 and 3, I get 5. So that does not give me the middle term. But we also have 6 times 1. 6 times 1 does equal 6. And 6 plus 1 equals 7. I found our factors. Once we find those two factors, so 6 and 1, that's what we put inside our binomial, our two binomials. So I'm going to have 6x plus 1 times x plus 6. By the way, you could also write it as x plus 6 times x plus 1. Remember, a times b is the same thing as b times a, so it does not matter which factor you put in the first set of parentheses and which you put in the second parentheses. What matters is those factors. So this would be your answer. How can you check your answer to see if you got it right? Well, now use FOIL. Take your answer and FOIL. And then that will let you know if you got the right factors. Let's do another example. Example 2. x squared plus 5x minus 24. Now again, the step. We want to find two factors that when I multiply them together, I'll get a negative 24, because in this case, my third term is a negative answer. So it's negative 24. And when I add those two factors, I will get positive 5. And again, you can test them out. What would give me negative 24? Well, I could do negative 6 times 4, but when I add those, that will not give me positive 5. You could try switching the signs. Well, what if I did negative 4 times 6. That does give me negative 24, but it doesn't give me 5. Well, I know 8 times 3, so let's try 8 times a negative 3. That does give me negative 24. And if I add 8 plus a negative 3, that gives me 5. Those are my factors then. I multiply them, I get negative 24. When I add them, I get positive 5, and that's what we put inside our parentheses. So I'm going to have x plus 8 times x minus 3. So whatever factors you find, you also keep that sign with the number. So because the 3 was negative, then I'm going to do x minus 3 inside the binomial. When you multiply, if you did factor and got your FOIL, then you're going to find you should get right back to your original answer. That is how we do factoring when there's just a coefficient of 1 in front of the x squared.
when we have another coefficient other than 1 in front of our x squared, that requires a few extra steps. So let's start with that. In that case, we're looking at ax squared plus bx plus c. So now I have something else besides 1 in front of the x squared. And I'll give you an example of what that would look like. 3x squared plus 11x plus 8. So that has something else. It has a 3 in front of the x squared. This is not a one-step factoring problem. This requires a few extra steps. And I'm going to write these steps down, and then we're going to use these steps to solve or to factor this problem. Step 1. We want to find factors, this time of a times c, whose sum is b. So we'll make that simple. This time, we're actually going to have to take a times c and then find factors of that number that add up to the middle term, which is b. Once we do that, that takes us to 2, step 2. Okay, we're going to use those factors, so those two new factors that we just find, and we're going to use those to rewrite the middle term of the trinomial as the sum of the two factors. And I'll just explain what that step means when we do this example. Once we do that, we're going to factor by grouping. So these are our three steps. So let's start with step one using this example. We want to take a times c. So that's going to be my first step. So I'm going to take 3 times 8. Now that gives me 24. Now, remember what we did in the previous factoring where we were taking, trying to find factors um, of the last term that when I add them together I get the middle term. Well, we're going to do this now. We're going to take 24 though. We want to find factors of 24 that when I add those two numbers, those two factors, I get the middle term. What's the middle term in this problem? The middle term is 11. So I want to find factors of 24 that when I add those two numbers up, I get 11. Now, in this case, it actually turns out to be what a times c is, and it won't always be that case. We're going to do another example where you see that. But in this case, it turns out that 3 plus 8 will give me 11, and 3 times 8 will give me 24. Now, it won't always work out that way. So, step two. I'm going to use those factors. So in this case, those factors are 3 and 8. And I'm going to use those factors to rewrite the middle term. In other words, my middle term is 11. Now I'm going to rewrite that as 3 plus 8, because 3 plus 8 is 11. So we're not changing the problem. We're just rewriting it. So now what happens is I keep, this is step 2, I keep the first term. But now my middle term just became 3x plus 8x. Or you could have written it 8x plus 3x. It does not matter which order you put those factors in. Plus 8, because that was my last term. So notice what we did. We have 3x plus 8x, which is 11x. So as long as it adds up to be the middle term, we haven't changed the problem. We've just rewritten it differently. Now, what does step 3 say? Well, step 3 says to factor by grouping. I love to factor by grouping. What we want to do is we want to literally group into two different binomials. So let me rewrite this equation down. Not equation, this problem down. And for grouping, what we're going to do is we're going to group the first two terms together and the last two terms together. Now, we're going to focus on each set of parentheses. So I look at the first set of parentheses, and I want to factor out the common factor. So between a 3x squared and a 3x, 3x is what is common between those two terms. So I'm going to factor that out. What does that leave me with inside? An x plus 1. Now I go to the other side. Between 8x and 8, I'm going to factor out an 8. And that leaves me with x 
plus 1. Now with factoring by grouping, this is what you want to see. You want to see the set of parentheses to have the same terms in there. They both have x plus 1. So what we're going to do now for our last step is I'm going to factor out that x plus 1. That's our common term. And what do we have left over? We've got our 3x and our plus 8, which are on the outside of those parentheses. And now you factored. Let's do another example. 6x squared plus 5x minus 6. Again, let's start with step 1. It says that I take a times c, so a is 6 and c is negative 6, and we get negative 36. Now we want to find factors of negative 36 that add up to 5, because 5 is my middle term. So I need factors of 36 that will add up to 5. And you can go through all the different factors. There's 6 times negative 6, but when I add those together, I don't get 5. There is 9 times 4. We can try that. So if we take 9 times a negative 4, we do get negative 36. And if I take 9 plus a negative 4, we get positive 5. Therefore, 9 and negative 4 are the two factors that we want to work with. That takes me to step 2. Now I rewrite my equation. We keep the first term, and then we take the two new factors and put that in the middle. So now I write plus 9x, because the middle term has an x in front of it, so we need to put an x in front of these factors. And 9 and negative 4 does give me 5x. So again, those middle terms, those two factors, need to, when we combine them, give us the middle term. And in this case, that does. And then our last term was minus 6. So the only cha thing, change we're doing is that middle term. Now from here, step 3. We factor by grouping. So here's our problem again. Let me just write it down. And we group. So we group the first two. And we group the second two. Now we factor. Looking at the first set of parentheses. Between a 6x squared and a 9x, I can factor out a 3x. What that leaves me with is 2x plus 3. Now be careful with this next side. There's a minus. That is a negative. So when I factor something out, don't, we can't change this negative. Now between a 4 and a 6, I'm going to factor out a 2. But because I factored out that negative, that leaves me with 2x but plus 3. Because remember, negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. So that sign will change. Now, the problem looks the way we need it to look. We've got our 2x plus 3 in both parentheses. So I'm going to factor that out. And what we have left is what's on the outside of the parentheses. I've got a 3x and I've got a minus 2. And now your problem has been factored.